all right? We are the Hebrew Israelites coming week in and week out to preach repentance and forgiveness to the nation of Israel. But first, we want to start by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rakakwadash. Peace to the nation of Israel. Shalom. Shalom. We're going to touch on the topic today about how you're supposed to be, um, you know, in a spirit of, of love, man, or what spirit you ought to be of. You know what I mean? We call this the unbreakable breakdown. You know, it's, it's indestructible. It's indestructible. It has, uh, you know, it's no way that, uh, that you can come against a, uh, someone that's coming in this type of spirit. You know, it's impossible to come against a person that's functioning in this spirit. You know? It's uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that they should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Huh, so what people do is they oftentimes they uh, they miss uh, they misquote this man. You know they say you know uh, give diligence, but they don't explain how you give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Let me read that. It says a lot of time. You got it. It says. But, but he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make their calling and election sure. For if they do these things, they shall never fall. Yeah, so this is how you give diligence to make your calling and election sure because everybody wants to be the called, right? Everybody wants to, the, the most high to be dealing with them. The Most High is not dealing with you if you aren't doing these things. If you're not adding, if you don't have, if you're not possessing temperance, if you don't have patience, if you don't have godliness, you don't have brotherly kindness. You know, if you don't have tenderness towards your neighbor. Then you don't, you're not, you know, the Most High is not dealing with you, and you're not the call. You know. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. That's right. When they first, when they first came out with the descriptive word of white, that was us. Period. Right. But it, it, history is all switched around. Of course. Over, That's know. what I say in the scripts. <laughs> they turn everything upside down. Oh, yeah. You know what so I'm saying? You guys already know what time it is. Then. Lord willing. What time it is right now <laughs> in the world? Kind of. Yeah. This we're in the last age. Yes, this sir. It right here. You know what I'm saying? That we're coming into our power shift. Lord willing. What's that paradigm shift? That's right. Oh, yeah, so, exactly. That's right. <laughs> oh, well, it's already been written down. All right. On that uh, yeah, but I just wanted, I just basically, you know, I, you know, you can understand, you can have mysteries and understand all, all things, but if you're not walking in brotherly kindness, you're not, you're not tender and you're not affectionate towards your brother, then, then you, you know, you're, you're you have all that information for no reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you don't want to have a bunch of information and then just be a, a, a tinkering symbol. You know what I mean? Because you can have lots of information. And then you're going nowhere. You're on a treadmill. This this first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding breast or a tinkling symbol. 
there. You just you just know a lot of stuff. You know, you don't you don't you're not, you're just making noise. You know, if you don't have brotherly uh, brotherly uh, love. You know, you're just out here making noise. You're just making points. You know, you know what I mean. You don't have charity, uh, temperance. That's right. You know what I'm saying. Uh, what was some of the other ones? Uh, got, uh, if you don't have brotherly kindness, charity. Kind. You don't, if you don't have uh, virtue. The virtue. Yep. You know, purity, purity, innocence. That's right. That's right. You know, and you're not partaker in the divine nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You always shot. Uh, uh, no. Nope. Uh, just the same way someone. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to see where he was on. He said, I'm a Moor. He said, I said, that Moor just means black smell. <laughs> no, no, yes, it means it. Moor science. <laughs> he was going to go into Moor science. That's what he was going to try to do. Bro, we know about that Moor science stuff, man. <laughs> what the hell that mean? <laughs> Moor science not going to save you, man. Moor or moron? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, Sirach, chapter 19, verse 24. He that has small understanding and fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is better than one that have much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. Yeah, so it's better to have small understanding and fear the Heavenly Father. You know, it's better to have small understanding and fear and revere the Heavenly Father because that's better than much, that, that's better than, uh, Salak, can you read that again? Huh. It's, uh, Sirach. Chapter 19, verse 24. He that has small understanding and fear of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is better than one that have much wisdom and transgresses the law of the Most High. God, God. You know, it has much wisdom and has much wisdom. That's Satan. Yeah, and has much wisdom and transgresses the, the, the laws of uh, the Most High. You know, and that wisdom can go into the wisdom of this world. You know, he has much wisdom in this world or he has wisdom as far as he has this information, but he's not set by it. He's not applying it in his life, yeah. you know? That's the scary one. Yeah, so that, that makes you, uh, that puts you in the danger zone. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, you just want to grab that. Oh, you want me, you want me to get that one? That's what I was saying, that's what I was saying. No, I just want to get that one. That was good, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Like, good. Yeah, good. This, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse I'll start from this second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. It says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. This second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. It says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, out of a pure heart. That's right. So it's saying, flee youthful lusts. You know, in the scriptures, it talks about how when I was a child, I thought like a child. So you're supposed to be putting on a man's mind, man. You're supposed to be thinking like a man. You know, not like that book, think like a man supposed to think like a man in the sense of being, being a man you know girding up thy loins like a man not think like a man and it says uh it says but follow righteousness faith charity and peace once again it's, it's, it's echoing the same sentiments that it was talking about in uh first peter you know what i mean so this is how you this is how you become uh this is how you, you become impenetrable in the eyes of the, of the heavenly father this is unbreakable this is something that you cannot overthrow, lest happily you be found fighting against the Heavenly Father. It says, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strikes. Yeah, that's right. Foolish and un unlearned questions avoid, you know? And foolish and unlearned questions can go into just, you know, uh, you know going back and forth about things that may not be uh, beneficial, you know? So it says, be foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Knowing that they do gender strikes, yeah. So they, it'll just it'll just cause a, a more confusion than it'll be more edifying. The scripture says, "Speak when you speak, you're supposed to speak uh, so that it can minister grace into the hearers." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it can it can further and it can it can prop up a person, man. You know, build them up. God, God. Verse twenty four, and the servant of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai must not strive. 
but be gentle unto all men and to teach patience. That's right. So it says the servant of the Lord must not strive. And I know people say, you know, you're supposed to uh, earnestly contend for this faith and you're supposed to strive for the truth and to death uh -huh. and the most high fight for you. But it's not talking about physically fighting because we know, according to the scriptures, that we're not in a physical fight. So it's not actually talking about well, mental. Yeah, 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 come on. So it's not actually the, the battle of wits. Right. So, so this isn't talking about actually fighting. We know that our whole fight isn't a physical fight. So this is talking about, you know, you're not supposed to strive. We're not supposed to get into a fist fight. Because the scripture says, be not brawlers. You know, you're not supposed to be a brawler. You're not supposed to be trying to be, uh, you know, basically causing a, a, a rift. You know what I mean? Uh, through uh, through a, a back and forth. Uh, and you're not a great debater either. You know what I'm saying? You're not, great, you're not on the debate team. When you join your how about you say you don't join the debate team. It's not what this is, man. You want to go, go to Jeopardy. It says, verse 25, in meekness instructing all, instructing those that oppose themselves. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Right, 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 right. If the Hawabah Shem Yahweh per adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That's right. So that shows you that the Most High is the one that's ultimately setting things straight. You know he's the uh, he's ultimately the one that's uh that's the one that's contending. He's the real he's the man he's the real. The scripture says he'll fight for you. Stri strive for the truth until mm, death, and the Most will High fight. will fight. Right, exactly. You know, so he's gonna be the one fighting because nah. the battle is not yours. You know, <laughs> you you can't make anything happen. Good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The most High is the only one that can make something happen. He, you're his workmanship. Unless happily you be found to fight against Yahweh Shemayim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how you become an approved workman. Time. You know? Mm -hmm. Time. It says, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. That's right, man. So the most high, it says, the most high peradventure will give them repentance. And that they may recover themselves out of the hand of Satan, man. So it's the most high recovering them out of the hands of Satan. Not because you can fight. You know, not because you can fight. It's because he can fight. Time. You know? You know, the Lord is mighty, man. Powerful to save. Let me add a quick point too. And it shows that the servant of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, must be gentle, merciful, and compassionate with those who are not of the faith and must understand that those who oppose themselves to the faith are under the grip of Satan. Mm. You know? Bring that out again. Nah. That's a lot. Nah. And so what we what we just read in, in 2 Timothy 2 and 24 through 26, it details how the servant of, of, of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, must be gentle, merciful, and compassionate with those who are not of the faith and must understand that those who oppose themselves to the faith are under the grip of Satan. That's right, you know? that's right. Yeah, they're under the grip of Satan. Uh -huh. You know, so it's like, you know, we understand that Satan is the son of the left hand side. Uh -huh. You know? You can't, you know, you, you're gonna, you're gonna need the help. You're gonna need your spiritual help to beat them. You know, you're gonna need spiritual help. You gotta realize too that people that you're striving with, you're not even striving with them. You're, you're contending with spiritual demons. It's like you said, it's a spiritual fight. It tell you that in Ephesians 6 chapter, we war are not, not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, dominions, spiritual weakness in high places. Man. That's what we're up against. We're not up against people. And right. what they think, man. That's right. No. Nope. Right. Yeah, we wore not according, although we're in the flesh, we wore not according to the yeah, flesh. Yeah, huh, exactly. Good. It's uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Oh, I started at 1. Huh? This Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1. Huh? It says, And you have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in the time past they walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yep. So it says, and you, you have he quickened. That means you didn't do it in your own, on your own power. You know, it says, you have he quickened in trespasses and sins, where in time past you, worked, you walked according to the courses of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. You know, which means the Most High delivered you out of the grips of Satan, so that you can live a, ri a life unto righteousness. Just you know? let it flow. Just let it flow. Gotcha. That's right. That's that's, that's that right, living brother. water. 
Yeah. That's right. That's that's, that's that living water. <laughs> Jake. Yup. <laughs> yup. For real. Yeah. That's three. You Jake. already know. <laughs> Jake always always already know everything. What by teacher? <laughs> Verse three, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Y'all Israelites, child of, child of children of God. No, so-called Mexicans, our Israel children Garden. of God. <laughs> yeah. Verse three, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the flesh of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others that's right by nature sown in iniquity you know sown in uh shaping in, shaping in iniquity God. you know what i mean sown in corruption yeah God. sown in corruption God. shaping in iniquity received in mischief received in mischief God. received in mischief God. right God. it says but how about some of our son who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with the Mashiach by grace, they are saved. That's right, so it was an act of love, man. It was an act of love that that brought you out of a dark place, you know? Because he, he uh, the Most High was in every, uh, he had every right to put you to death, you know? But it was love, it was an act of love when he, when he went ahead and he extended mercy to you, you know? So what, what should you do? Now that you've you received so much love, what you do is you pay it forward. I got to hear what I put on this one. Yeah. It says, we were all dead in our trespasses and sins before Yahweh by Shem Yahweh's tender mercies brought us out of that. And his great love, and, and with his great love, and we must also give that love back uh, and that grace that was bestowed upon us and we value that, uh, we show that we uh, appreciate that love and that grace that was bestowed upon us by giving that mercy and that love back unto our neighbor. That's exactly right. Huh. That's exactly right. Each huh. one, reach one. Huh. <laughs> you know? Each one, teach one. Yo. Yeah. So you you receive love, you give it back. You know, it's not a hard concept, really. You know, I receive love and I give hate in return. <laughs> you know that's not it. <laughs> that's fucking wild. Yeah, you know that's not it. Good, huh? Good, bro. Good, huh? And th and th and this is like what the Most High is looking at too. He's looking to see, because we read in 2 Peter, the first chapter, about how mm -hmm. uh, he that lack of these things is blind and forgot that he was purged from his old sins. Mm. So if, if, if you if you lack uh, certain type of qualities like love, mercy, brotherly kindness, virtue, patience, yep. it shows that you have not been purged from your old sins yet, man. That's right. It's, it shows that you're still that old man, you know? That's right. And this, and this like, so this is one of the, the heaviest things that the Heavenly Father is looking at, man. He's looking to see where's your where's your love, where's your compassion, where's your mercy, where's your kindness, where's your gentleness, where's your patience. This is what the Heavenly Father looking at. So like, you know, you know, the scriptures, you know, uh, not the scriptures, but you know how they say in the world, you are your old man. You know what I mean? You right. are your father, the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you're your old man. You, you're your father, the devil. <laughs> so your daddy, son. <laughs> Good. Yeah, good. This uh, Titus. What's going on? This Titus, chapter three and verse one. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Let's see how we'll be ready to every good work. Yeah. <laughs> it's being ready to every good work, putting on your garment and your meat tree, right. and being, being ready to go to camp. Nope. Loading up precepts before camp, making a video. Here we go. <laughs> it says, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. That's right. And that's how you do it, man. You know? That's how you do it. We just talked about that, too. We talked about you be no brawlers. Uh -huh. And be gentle. Yep. You know? But why are you doing that, though? Why are you? <laughs> But why, you know what I'm saying? Why, but you, the reason you're being gentle when you're doing these things is because someone was gentle with you. Yeah. You know right, what I mean? Someone was gentle with you. Yep. That's why you ought to be behaving this way. Mm -hmm. You know? Somebody and, took their time with you. God, and in verse in, in verse one, 
It said, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates. Why? Because Yahweh Shah is all and in all. Mm -hmm. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers unaware, man. Mm -hmm. That's why you 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 operate within the with the same type of uh, qualities and characteristics towards everyone because you don't know who anyone is. That's, right. That's the whole point. That's right. You know, and plus. The Heavenly Father, he was gentle to you when you could have been anybody. Well, he knew who you was. That's right. That's right. We don't know who these people is, but the Heavenly Father knew who we was. We was the children of disobedience. That's right. But he still shed love and mercy and gentleness upon us. So that's why, even if we know somebody, which we don't, it's on some, in, 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 a, in, a, in a, a certain type of stage, we still are to impart those type of qualities unto them. That's right. You know? That's right. Well, what about the people that's woken up at the, at the uh, 11th hour? Oh, yeah, God. You know what I mean? God. You know what, what, what about them? Uh -huh. Something to be mindful of. See, well, the first, the, the first ones thought they, they supposed themselves to receive more than the penny. The, the ones who came in the first hour, they was like, well, we should get more than them doing them who was in the 11th hour. Right. You know? So that lets you know a lot of people mindset. Yeah. You know? like, man, we've been doing this. <laughs> yeah. They look like, look damn, Val Raymond. God, these fucking, uh, these uh, upstarts, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. These fucking novices, they don't deserve this. You know, they put in the study time I did. Mm -hmm. Give a damn what study time you put in. Hey, how about you not shine a part of the spirit in you to study, man? Exactly. Unless you're not, you ain't, you ain't even genuine me. <laughs> you ain't even genuine me. You're, you're a tinkling symbol. Right. You're a tinkling symbol. You got all this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but you don't operate in the spirit, though. That's right. It says, verse 3. It says, it says, verse 3, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Yep, it says we were in times past, though. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, that's your past. Yeah. You know, we were living in hate and, and hate. And uh, we were hating one another. We were deceived. We were disobedient, mm -hmm. and we had ma we were malicious, mm -hmm. envious, you know? and we were envious as hell, mm -hmm. hating know? one another, and hating one another. <laughs> God, God. So yeah, that was which, that. Which, which proves that hate is supposed to be a thing of the past. Yep. Why in the hell are you hating your brother or your neighbor, man? Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to be delivered from hate, man. That's right. That's crazy, man. That's because you ain't delivered. <laughs> you ain't saved yet. <laughs> well, yeah. Ultimately, nobody's saved. But you're supposed to be delivered from the bondage of unrighteousness, man. Yeah. Which, by the way, hatred is a part of evil. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, it's a work of the flesh. Read Galatians the fifth chapter. We're not making this up. Yep. Hate, hatred ain't got nothing to do with you. How about Shema Shah? How, you know how I know that? First John 4 and 8. How about Shema Shah is love. Break that down. <laughs> <laughs> right. They won't. It says verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love. Of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to. I, I was gonna say something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let me not eat into that. So like it. <laughs> it's like, so you wanna go tell uh, Esau to shut the fuck up in a uh, in a in a uh, Congress meeting? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It says, verse five, and then and then you ain't even got balls to come say it to me. Nah, I wanna yell it. Yeah. Yelling, let my voice carry <laughs> <laughs> in case you scream. Verse 5 Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Yep. So the works of righteousness, you know, according to his mercy, have he saved us, you know, and that mercy go that's synonymous with. Uh, it's, it's, well, it's the fruit of the spirit and it's synonymous with showing love you know I'm giving you mercy where I could have gave you an ass whooping to death you know so this is just things that you need to be mindful of when you think about being in a hateful spirit when you think about uh, when you think that you're in the spirit you know you're really out of the spirit because uh, it uh being ready unto every good work involves being mindful of the spirit and energy we push out and also involves us being mindful of our previous state. This should move us unto compassion and humility. That's right. That's right. It sure should. Uh, no. We should be triggered. We should be triggered on the good works. Uh, you know? We're supposed to, like the scripture says, we're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to, um, 
uh, provoke people under good works. We're supposed to provoke people to love. Why? Because the Most High provoked us to love because we've been forgiven of a lot, which is supposed to make you want to forgive a lot. Uh -huh. You know, you should be in a pitiful spirit. Uh -huh. This uh, Sirach chapter 18, I started 10. It says, as a drop of water unto the sea and a gravel stone in comparison of the sand, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. Therefore, is Jehovah by Shem Yahweh patient with them and pour forth his mercy upon them. He saw and preserved, like it. He saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore, he multiplied his compassion. He did what? <laughs> he saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore, he multiplied his compassion. Yeah, he saw and perceived their end to be evil and he multiplied their compassion. He multiplied his compassion. <clears throat> Same thing you should you should do when you see a man in vile raiment, i.e. you see a man in moral corruption. When you see a person that isn't on a level that you that you so supposed to be on, you're supposed to think of you're supposed to think of that man and consider that man, you know, or that or that woman. You know, you're supposed to consider them and say, hey, you know, let me multiply my compassion. It says in verse 13. Uh -huh. It says, the mercy of man is toward his neighbor. But the mercy of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shad, is upon all flesh. He reproveth and nurtureth and teacheth and bringeth again as a shepherd his flock. That's right, man. And this is a char this characteristics that the Most High has, man. Which means you're supposed to do that. If you're like your Father in heaven, be ye perfect. Be ye perfect like your Father in heaven. Yep. You know? Being merciful, compassionate. Little baby. Little baby. Y'all Israelites, you know that, right? Good child of God. I think he did. Good child of God, man. Israelite. Israelite. You are. I'm sure that's what I'm trying to figure out who it is. I don't know. They fucking mad at you. That's him? Okay, fine. Who would be this guy? What's that uh, B in my seat? Is that 21? What's like that B in my seat? Uh, yeah. John 21. Oh, John, John 21? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's St. John, chapter 21. What? You don't even know what we're teaching. We're we teaching about love and mercy. There's no law against love and mercy. We're teaching about charity. We're teaching about charity. What are you doing? What's up? Uh, what, what you saying? What's up? 2160. Mm -hmm. Con. This, uh, St. John, chapter 21, and verse 16. I started 15. So when they had died, Yahweh Shai said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto me, feed, unto him, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said it unto him the third time. Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shai said unto him, feed my sheep. That's right, man. And, you know, feeding the sheep, if you go to Jeremiah 3 and 15, it talks about you feeding them with knowledge and understanding. You know, he's going to raise up men to feed them. To feed them with knowledge and understanding according to the mind of the Lord. Uh -huh. You know, you're supplying the soul's requisites for that for that individual, man. So it doesn't just mean, you know, bestowing money or bestowing gifts or whatever. Or giving videos. You know, or dropping a video, uh -huh. you know, or giving lip service. <laughs> you know, this means actually giving this uh, supplying the soul's needs. Mm -hmm. Nurturing. That's right. Nourishing someone. Just right. like we read in Sirach 18. It says he reprove them and nurture them and teach them. That's right. You know? This, this is a part of how exhorting. Oh boy, what, what's, what is, 
when you talk about a mother or whatever, you know, it's talking about how they nurture. That nurturing aspect goes into a lot of things. It's gentleness, love, compassion. Cherishing. Yeah, you know, you, you, you're, you're nourishing them up, giving yep. them milk. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You're doing, them. Yeah, you're doing a lot of things. Yeah. It's a lot of things that goes into that yeah, nourishing. Yeah, that's it. That's right. You know, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's how you do it, man. You treat them as if they're your own child. And then, they're children. And then it's, you, you can uh, mi uh, miss, mi uh, improperly uh, malnourish someone. You could you could malnourish someone. That's right, you can. You know what I'm saying? You know, by not by not giving them that exhortation, by not giving them that love, by not giving them compassion, by not giving them gentleness, yeah. by not being meek with them. You know, uh, yeah. that 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 could be mal malnutrition. You know, right. and I can attest to that, man, because I it's a lot of qualities I didn't understand about the spirit of Yahweh by Shimao Shah, and I'm listening to what men say, and then. It got me in a certain type of spirit. That's right. You know that's what I'm right. saying? Where well, I'm thinking that this is how you're supposed to operate, man. That's yeah. malnutrition. That's right. That's right. Because it's, you know, Lord Yahweh Shai said, you got to be like one of these children. Huh, nah. You know what I mean? And when you come in as one of these children, you're looking to be fed, man. You're looking to be fed. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Nah. You know, nah. So you got to feed. You got to feed. You got to feed. He's like, I want to come out early. I'm still here. I don't ever sleep. This uh, this second, I mean, it's like it. This first Peter chapter two and verse two. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. Uh, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow there, thereby. And a lot of things ain't milk. You know, being a brother all the time can go into this. Listen, uh, jumping up to verse one. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all gall and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes Desire the sincere milk of the word that they may go thereby. So all evil speakings and all of this stuff is not sincere milk. You know, evil speakings, with guile, guile, malice, uh, guile, malice, envies, envies, envies you know, hypocrisy. This isn't this isn't milk. You know, and there's a lot of things that fall under that that brothers speak about. You know, that that shows that that's not milk, man. You know, there is there's a certain thing that is milk. You know? What is that? That's, that's, that's things that nurture. What are the things that nurture that, that supply a soul's records? You know, we just talked about that. You know, those things, those things, anything that builds you up, because that's what it did. That's what it, that's what milk's supposed to do. It's supposed to build you up, right? Cause you to grow. What's 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 the what's the highest thing that can build you up according to the scriptures? Charity. Charity builds you up. You know? That's what builds you up. Charity, there's a yeah, yeah. This first Peter chapter four and verse eight, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So charity, charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Your own and those that you that you teach charity yep. to. Yep. You know, it'll cover sins. Yep. You know, because there's no law against charity. Yep. You know, because sin is the transgression of the law. Yeah, but they, I'm pretty sure they own it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they own it. This, uh, I got you. This, this first, first Timothy 4, 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctors, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. God, so that, that, that shows you what I, what I was saying. I wasn't making it up. You know, take heed unto thyself and according to the doctrine. Continuing them for doing those, doing these things, you shall save yourself and those that hear. You know what I mean? But what are you teaching? Or what doctrine? The doctrine of a Mashiach. You know, they marveled at his doctrine. He had a specific doctrine he was kicking. You know, he was coming with the law of love, the law of charity, the law of compassion. You know, this is the law. You know? Then, then why, why did the Most High not smoke us? 
<laughs> when he was when he had every opportunity to. Why do you let your house even come down here and piss it? <laughs> right. Why do your house so he just let your house side come down here and piss a whole bunch of mats? Right. Just to piss it. That's because that's what he's about. Matter of fact, he's just talking about that. Uh, he has. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15 and verse 1. Uh -huh. But thou, O Yahweh, art gracious and true, long suffering and in mercy are ordering all things. That's right. So the Most High is, is showing you his characteristics. This is what he always wanted from the beginning. You know, this is how this is this is how things oh, should have been. Yeah, I gotta read some outside of the piece. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> you 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 said wisdom too. Oh, oh I'm about to What's that wisdom too? Yeah, that was it says, verse 2, for if we sin, we are thine, knowing thy power, but we will not sin, knowing that we are counted thine. For to know thee is perfect righteousness. Yeah, to know thy power is the root of immortality. Yeah, so to know you is is, is perfect righteousness. You know, and how do you, how, what, what, he just told you who he was. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> you have to know him. You know, to know him is perfect righteousness and it's the root of immortality, but how, do you know him? You know, you, you, you don't really know him if you don't know who he who he really is. God. And well, <laughs> Karaf made a great point uh, a while back. He was like, uh, a lot of the heathen know Yahweh as a terrible, a terrible power. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a terrible power. So a lot of our people, sometimes they associate with Yahweh as a terrible power, but you gotta associate Yahweh with the things he wanna be associated with, like compassion. Long suffering, you know. What, yeah. it, what about the stuff it say that he's associated with? It don't say I'm associated with death, terror, and pain. It don't tell you that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so what? What the hell are you coming up with this from? It's right. like you making up a god. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know the god that you know, mm -hmm. the one you done made up in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Because the expectation of the wicked is only wrath. So you not. just know a wrath of power. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it goes. Yeah. That's wild, well, I got one too. Oh, you got, oh, you I was thinking John now. Yeah, I know that's a precept. I got yeah. one too. I got you. Just to make sure it's not pointed to the river. I was going to drive it. I was going to kill it. I, but I'm 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 gonna gonna put it on top of it. Yeah, I'm going to put it on top of it. Because right, I was thinking about this one too. Oh, okay. This uh, Jeremiah chapter 9. I'm Glory of glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh uh -huh. which exercise loving kindness. Wow. Hold on, hold on, let's start there for the top. Let's start there for the top. Just in case you ain't catching. <laughs> this, this Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 24. But let him that glory of glory in this, mm -hmm. that he understandeth. And knoweth me. Yeah, so that he understandeth and knoweth me. We know according to wisdom 15, he said, to know the most high is perfect righteousness. Yes, sir. You know? So what so what <laughs> so how do you know Yahweh Bashim uh -huh. That I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh mm -hmm. which exercise loving kindness, loving kindness, judgment, judgment, and righteousness uh -huh. in the earth. Right. For in these things I delight, said the Lord. We gotta clear up that judgment part though, because people would say, Oh, he do judgment. You well, know, let's he, look up. Let's see what judgment means. Well, can we go? Can we go to Psalm seventy-two? Okay. Oh yeah. Well, got time, <laughs> and we can look up what judgment means too. Let's look that up too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just in case you think judgment is just somebody getting put to death. <laughs> how, how, how the hell are you gonna be a judge and think judge judgment is all about death? Yeah. That's not what judges do. They judge a right, and this is why this is Psalm seventy-two shows you that that judging a right. Huh. You know what I mean? You might as well be a, a, a pallbearer or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you got the wrong profession, man. This, 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 this Psalms chapter 72 and verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. 
and so break in pieces the oppressor. So it shows you that judgment there can be saving the needy and breaking in pieces the oppressor. So he's, 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 he's uh, like, like, it, like it says in the scriptures, you're supposed to judge the cause of the needy. Judge the cause of the needy, man. Uh -huh. You know? And that's judgment, man. Judging the cause of the needy. You know, breaking in pieces the ones that are being the, the oppressors. You know? And if you hate your brother, you're an oppressor of the oppressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, if you're holding back things that the Hawassa uh, told us to follow after, you're a oppressor too. That's right. You're oppressing things that pertain to life, everlasting life, man. That's right. That's my Shabbat, uh -huh. which goes into act of deciding a case, process, procedure, litigation, call, case, cause. Act of deciding a case. You see what's right, what's wrong. You know what I mean? Here go the one that a lot of people talk about. Sentence, decision of judgment. A yeah. sentence. It's really a sentence. But yeah, that's skipping, that's skipping all kinds of steps. Nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? That's going straight to execution. Yeah, kind of. You didn't even think about, you didn't even decide the case. That, that's that's separate from judgment, actually. That's actually the exe, that's that, that's actually uh the extermination. The, what you gonna say, bro? Yeah, 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 kind. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, what came forth from the results of the judgment, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That wasn't the actual judgment. That's right. They don't want to hear a matter first. <laughs> God, you know, uh, judge, doesn't the scripture say you're supposed to hear a matter and then judge? You yep. don't judge before you hear a matter. Yeah, God, uh, hear it first. I hear it out. Well, that's, that's against the law. That's man. against the law. You can't do that, man. You can't. You got to hear the person of the small and the big, man. You got to hear them completely out too, man. You know? Yeah. That's how the most high do it. God. He Bro. has a, 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 case, a case against you. So why? Because he's been judging and seeing the whole thing. Bro, even in Esau's uh, penal system, and even in his court system, he, it takes, sometimes a lot of them cases don't get decided until years later, man. Well, people sit on death row for years. Yeah, nah, nah. You sit on death row for years. Nah, nah. You know, that's even in an unrighteous system. Yeah, nah, nah. But the righteous want to put somebody to death immediately. <laughs> you know how they did stiff, uh, stiff. <laughs> how they did stiff, and they said, nah, kill him now, yeah, that's, right here. Yeah, that's wrong. Oh, that, oh, that's the spirit of the anti yeah, that's, right. that's what they were doing in your house shop. Put him to death. Yeah, put him to death. Uh, what did he do wrong? No, kill him. Kill him anyway. Don't hear the matter. Yeah, we don't want to hear the matter. Yeah, kind. Yep. Just put him to death. It says, uh, it's like, and see, and whatever me measure of judgment that you meet, that's what you're going to be met with. That's right. That's right. You know? That's why it's best. That in there. It's like, that's, that's why it's best to just go ahead and, uh, to be in the spirit of forgiveness. Nah. You know, letting the most high decide. Right. You know, and it talks about that. You know, let the most high, you know, uh, uh, fight for you. Yeah, let right. him do. Let him do the. Uh, the, the uh, you know, basically let him carry out judgment. Right. You know. Right. It says uh, execution of judgment, time of judgment, justice, right, rectitude, attributes of Yahweh by Shem or man. That's that's the judgment that we really going into. Justice or rights. The rectitude of Yahweh by Shemya Osha or man. Rectifying. That's what really judgment goes into, uh, into re rectification, man. Mm. You know? Right, privilege, do. Mm. Proper, fitting measure. Custom, pet manner, or plan. You know? That's right. So it's the manner, the plan, the privilege of someone. Judgment is also a privilege, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's the act of deciding a case. Too, right? not, yeah. <laughs> That's really what it's going you know what into. Yeah. Because you you don't want to figure it out. You know, you, it's, it's too much, it's too much brain. Oh work. yeah, kind of, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. We want to operate in the uh uh the spirit they was in uh when we was under uh when we still under Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. But before our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach made his appearance, you know, where uh people was dying uh, in mm -hmm. front of two or three witnesses That's on right. spot. That's right, uh, you know. That's the spirit that they in. And you know what? Even when you're even when you're judging a, a, a matter, you still have to use love when you're doing it. Darn. Because uh, if you look at the, the, the situation with King Solomon, you know he used love to get to the heart of, of the matter. You know I, I, I made this point before, mm -hmm. and this uh, it's, it's just I have to make the point again because it just it rings so true right now. Mm -hmm. Is that you you have to still use love when deciding a matter. You know what I mean? You know how when the, when the, when he was asking the women, okay, whoever's baby this is, let's just cut the baby in half and right. give it and give it to, uh, to whomever it belongs to. Mm -hmm. And the woman that actually loved the baby with her with all her heart, mm -hmm. she didn't want to see the baby cut asunder. Mm -hmm. 
So she said, just let her have it. You know, so when you're judging and deciding a matter, you use love to get to the heart of the matter. You know what I mean? You don't just use wickedness and anger and hate and maliciousness to get to the heart of the matter and torture. You know what I'm saying? That's not how great judges do it. You use love to get to the heart of the matter even there. That's what Lord, that's what Yahweh's doing. He's using love to get to the heart of the matter. He's judging like that. Oh, well, he, he's not jigsaw. That's some shit jigsaw do, man. You know, you was doing this your whole life. Now you gotta pay for the slice you up. You know what I'm saying? Now you realize through, through getting your ass tortured. Man, <laughs> the fuck you think you have a shit like that jigsaw? Yeah, like he's just a depraved uh, Riding a around sociopath. on a bike and shit. Depraved <laughs> sociopath. Just wanna see you hurt. <laughs> oh shit. God. This, uh, I got a question. You was making a point about uh, how, you, how, how, how you don't get to a matter by certain type of things. This is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For Yahweh by Shem Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, so he's, wait, read that again. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. This is 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Yeah. Huh. For Yahweh by Shem Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, so that's how you're supposed to be using that, that tool to judge a right. You're using that tool to execute judgment the right way. You know, you're using it, you're using that power that you've been given to uh to judge a matter with love and of a sound mind. <laughs> exactly. And that's how you do it. Yep. You know? That's how you judge a matter with love and a sound mind. Which have a soundness goes into being reasonable, which goes into having proper judgment, man. That's right. And deciding the, uh, the, the case. That's right. So what, oh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Like, whatever you want for that man is something you would you would want for yourself. Exactly. So when it's time to judge, you're looking at that like if I was standing in them shoes, yeah. this is what I would want for myself. Exactly. Too. And that's what a great judge would consider. That's why it says, let this mind be in you as it was in your house on my shop. Let each man esteem the other higher than himself. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. if you, if you, here it is, you want the heavenly father to, uh, to pardon you from all your iniquity and all your mishaps and all your transgressions. Mm -hmm. But you're not gonna have that same type of energy for someone else who's transgressed against you and, and which, what, what, how in the hell did somebody transgress against you? That's right. I, I don't even understand that, man. That's right. You know? What the hell are you mad about, man? You're, you're, in, you're, you're in the worst captivity ever known to man. How did you get here? That's right. How did That's you right. get here? You, you worried about something else what somebody else did, man. Boy, Look at the shot. position you in, Salaki. Lord Yahweh Shai told you what to do when someone trespasses against you. Know? What did he say? Go grab a knife and slam. <laughs> That's what I mean. Guys come up with this in their mouths, yeah. or, or 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 rather, you know, uh, you know, kill them on a, on a public uh, on, in a public forum. You know, you put them to death in a public forum. You do a, a, a public flogging on a public forum. Nah, you don't do that. Either. You think about he didn't do that to Judas Iscariot. He didn't put Judas Iscariot on blessing. He knew Judas Iscariot was gonna betray him. He knew. Judas Iscariot was the son of perdition. He still ain't put him on blast, man. Right. You know? He yeah, he could have did it because he knew. That's wild. Wow. That's a good. One. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He still, he still forbeared him. Yeah, God. And huh? he still judged that according to if it was himself. He was just like, damn, what if I had to be the son of perdition? Yeah. And that's what you got to think a lot of times because we're not in control of who we are. Yeah, how about Shemesh Shaka that easily made us the son of perdition, man? And then we don't even know if we are. <laughs> you don't know your end yet, man. And it's a good chance your ass is the certain perdition if you don't want to operate in a certain type of spirit, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, you're in his spirit. You're in the spirit of the son of perdition. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? So one way or another, you are him. <laughs> you are a betrayer. Because right. how are you betraying your house up? Because you're not, you're not doing the things that he said are necessary for you to receive salvation in life. Uh, so you're betraying him. You're trying to come up another way. So like, so the scripture talks about the seed of the perdition, the seed of the son of son perdition. Of perdition. It right says, here. "Let him not have." Yeah. And it ain't just talking about spiritually. It's not. It's not just talking about his his remnant, his seed. It's talking about any of y'all that adopt that spirit. Mm -hmm. This applies to you. Here, go right here. Uh -huh. It's Saint John chapter seventeen, verse twelve. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in Thy name. Those that Thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, but the son of perdition, 
You know, he lost the son of perdition, but it's another one too. Oh, okay, Khan. Right. Um, what was that? That was uh, St. John chapter 17. This St. John chapter 17, verse 12. Mm -hmm. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And it's another thing too, the scripture has to be fulfilled. So there's men that's ha that has to play the role of per perniciousness for the scriptures to be fulfilled, you know? And this is another reason why we are to operate in a certain, certain type of spirit, because we understand the workmanship of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh he has created all things for himself, yet even the evil for the day of wicked. Uh, I mean, even the wicked for the day of evil. You know? So this is something that we have to realize that everything plays a role in the Heavenly Father's ultimate grand scheme of how he wants things to play out. You know? So make your point about what you want to say. But the son of perdition, basically the son of perdition, you know what I mean? He uh he basically um he played a role, man. He played a role, and you don't want to be that same person playing a role, you know, uh, you know, spiritually. Right. You know, playing that same role. Yeah. Solomon chapter 1 and verse 13. <laughs> it says, For Yahweh Bashem Yahweh may not death, neither have he pleasure in the destruction of the living. Yeah, that's right. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 13. For Yahweh Bashem Yahweh may not death. Neither has he pleasure in the destruction of the living. That's right, man. So the Most High, he made not corruption, man. You know, he doesn't want things. He didn't make things that so they can just die. You know what I mean? It talks about that in wisdom. Or it's all, you know, he doesn't want, he didn't make things just so they could be destroyed. Uh -huh. man. It's about to go into it. Uh, yeah, it's you know the ones I'm on this. Uh, yeah, I thought, yeah. The main thing that been added, right? Yeah, this is what we're going to do. It says, for, verse 14. For he created all things that they might have their being. And the generations of the world were helpful, and there is no poison of destruction either in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. That's right. That's right. The kingdom of death upon the earth. You know? So the most high he made things that they may have life. He made things that they may have life, man. You know, must think to have life. And what is a life? What is life? Wisdom is life. You know, wisdom is life. You know, when you're walking according to wisdom, you're walking according to life. You no, know, uh, righteousness is life. Oh, here go here. For righteousness is immortal. <laughs> That's right. That's how you know we'll be making this stuff up, buddy. <laughs> righteousness is immortal. Right. You know what? It's <laughs> unbreakable. Right. right. It's, just, it's, it's unbreakable. It's something that cannot be destroyed, man. You know? Righteousness is immortal. It is immortality. You know? And that's that's that that's that uh, a, a man that's morally innocent, man. A man that's morally innocent, that's walking uprightly, judging the right, judging the right. That man, you cannot. At the end of that man will be peace. At the end of that man will be peace. You know. It says, but ungodly men with their works and and words called it to them, for when they thought it to have it their friend, they consumed to not. And made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. Ooh, they made a covenant with death mm -hmm. because they were worthy to take part in death. That's, mm -hmm. you know? That's the son of perdition. That's right. That's right. And you don't want to make a covenant with death because you're making a covenant with something that the Most High didn't even make. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's cold, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's heavy. You're becoming nice. an ally with something that's completely outside of what the most high is. Yeah, that's heavy, y'all. You know, wanting somebody dead, mm. wanting your brother dead. Mm. You're making a covenant with death. Yeah, that's, ooh, that's ice cold, y'all. You know? 
<laughs> it's tough, I ain't even think about it like that. Yeah, it's like ice cold. Damn, that's a form of making a covenant with death. That's literally a form. That's really it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cold. Yeah. That's right, Doc. Wow. I got you right here. Mm -hmm. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. Yeah. Say unto them, as I live, said the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Yeah, so the Most High, He doesn't want you to die. You know, He doesn't want you to. He doesn't want you to perish. You know, why did He He, he, he extended mercy so that you wouldn't perish? You know, he, he He did an act of love so you would not perish. You know what I mean? So that's that shows you that He doesn't. He went, what did it say? I, I, I've gone through great to keep my, to keep this, uh, oh, great labor to uh, make it perfect, make it perfect, right? I've gone through great labor to make you perfect. You no, know? Most High has gone through great labor to make you perfect. Sent many people, you know what I mean? He's been preparing the way, preparing the minds of men, you know, preparing your heart. So, Matthew, it's like, Nah, you in there. You are in there. You are in there. Nah, you know, you know that's your endurance up. I noticed it. Yeah, I noticed it. This Matthew chapter 22 and verse 32. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Not the God of the dead, man. He's not the God, or he's not the king of the kingdom of death. You know? He's not the God of the dead, man. You know? And then we already know if you wander out of the way of understanding, you're in the congregation. You know? So if you wander out of understanding, that means you want to be a part of a specific kingdom. The kingdom of darkness. You know? You want to be a citizen of a specific kingdom. Yeah. That, that live according to different tenets. Oh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, man. Mm -hmm. You're an enmity with Yahweh Bashim right. outside. Because right. you love, you made a covenant with death. You don't want to partake in a new covenant. That's right. You know? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you, that's you, right. You, you, made a, you made a covenant with death. You don't want to be a part of the new covenant. Because you already got a covenant. <laughs> the death covenant. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you spew so much death. That's why you can't stand your brother because uh -huh. you're part of the death covenant. Yeah, uh. not the new covenant. Which what's 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 the branches? What's what's the branches in the in the, in the uh? What's the branches and sticks that come from the tree of uh death? Hatred, agony, pain, sorrow, uh, malice, envy. You know covetousness. This this all comes from the branch of death. You know what I'm saying? Them all branches of, that come from the tree of death. This uh this wisdom of Solomon 11 and verse 23. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things and winkest at the sins of man because they should amend. For thou lovest all the things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made. Mm. For never wouldest thou have made anything if thou hadst hated it. Mm. And how could have anything have endured if it had not been thy will, or been preserved if not called by thee? But thou sparest all, for they are thine, O Lord, thou by simply our son, thy lover of souls. That's right. Most High is a lover of souls. We talk about how the Most High said that His mercy is upon all flesh. He's a lover of souls. You know, but your love is towards your neighbor. You know, but on a deeper level, you know, you're supposed to have care of your beasts. You know, and then you're supposed to also, you're supposed to know your how about Shem Yahweh And if you know someone, you know their their movements, their their uh their traits. You know what I'm saying? And a part of the traits of the Heavenly Father is to uh, spare, spare all things, you know, to preserve things, to uh, endure things, to be long-suffering, to, to love and have mercy upon all. So when you consider the Heavenly Father and his overall traits and his characteristics and his mind state, 
you're supposed to take from that and instill it in you. It's most high level. Yeah, he's your role model. He's supposed to be like your role model. Like your father, you look up to your father, and certain things your father, he might not teach you, but you look at him and see it, and then you take it in and you start doing it. That's what you're supposed to do with the Heavenly Father. Shoot, the Most High was sparing animals and everything in Nineveh. Khan. He was he was sparing every everybody in Khan. Nineveh. Khan. You know, eventually Nineveh was, went, was, uh, went down, but you know uh, Jonah was upset that the Most High didn't just kill oh, everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah. Take everything out. That's what that's the heavenly point. He spared them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some Jakes get mad when you when when, when, you, when you spare people. <laughs> you spared them? Yeah, you already know. <laughs> Jake don't like that shit. Yeah. The fuck leave no witnesses. <laughs> no face, no case. <laughs> Good, huh? No, we're sparing things over here. <laughs> we're sparing. Good, huh? Jumping up uh chapter 12. Uh jumping out of uh wisdom 12 and 13. It says, For neither is there any power but thou that care for all. To whom thou mightest show that thy judgment is not unright. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who cares? I'll just make a quick point. So this is a key way that you show that your judgment is not unright. It's by having mercy upon all. Uh -huh. That's how you show this. That's a key way that you show that your uh, judgment is on key. It's by having mercy upon all. So the Most High, when, when the children of Israel used to go and invade certain territories, the Most High would tell them. And give him strict instruction. Don't slay these people over here. Right. Certain people he would say, go in oh, and yeah, kill everybody. Right. Yeah, right. Certain instances he'd say, leave them be. Oh, don't touch God. them. Don't touch their land. God. Leave them alone. Because he did. He did. It's, it's a lot of times when uh, you have by Shema I have Jake uh, go and invade territories, like you said. He'll, he'll specifically say who you he want who he wanted you to be. Yes. Like uh, the, during the time with uh, Saul, he told Saul to go kill man, woman, and child. That's right. He said like so. He specifically made it like don't leave the women, the women around and spoil, kill their ass too. Yep. It's a lot of times you have to say he wanted specifically. That's right. You know, and he wants you to be a man of integrity because Joshua, he was tricked and went into a pact with a heathen, and um, and he really had to honor that with that oh, heathen. God, man. Yeah. Oh, because oh, which proves that we have to uphold the law, even if it's not with our people, man. You still gotta uphold, cause you're supposed to be. How how how, how is it good that you're subject to the law, but you don't have to be subject to the law with someone else that's a heathen? You know? Yeah, that's that's foolish. Now, no, no. So, yeah, no, hell no. That's supposed to be in you. That's supposed to convert your soul. You know what I'm saying? How in the hell? Can't, it doesn't apply anymore. That's wickedness, man. And another, you can't just be taking. This is another point too, a little side point. You can't just take the heathen women that have been with men and just pop them because the Most High used to say, put them to death. Oh yeah, you can't God, even lay with them, which means that heavy. he don't want you taking their women if they've been with men. That's heavy. You know, just because it's a heathen. That's heavy as fuck. Yeah, I ain't, yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, I ain't even consider that one. <laughs> Why well, man will consider? <laughs> like you could just take him because oh, he, that was what he eats. Yeah, he, he, Elon. Right. Yeah. Nah. Then, I could just pop her. Right. <laughs> nah. You, you gotta judge her right. Yeah. You better. You better make proper judgment calls in every situation. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. It says, "Neither shall king or tyrant be able to set his face against thee, for any whom thou hast punished, <laughs> for so much then as thou art righteous, thyself thou orderest all things righteous." Think it, it not agreeable with thy power to, to condemn him that have not deserved to be punished. Right. So you don't you don't condemn people that don't deserve to be punished, man. You know, the people that don't deserve to be punished, leave them the hell alone. Oh, that's really uh, that's one of the things that the Most High hates, man. Someone who wants to sow discord or uh, a false witness against brethren. You know, yeah. a false witness. That's like a false witness. You know what I'm saying? You're saying, oh, they deserve to die. But he didn't, how about my son? Like, hold on, he deserved to be punished though. Yep. You know? It says, For thy power is the beginning of righteousness. And because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be gracious unto all. Yep. 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 So he maketh make make thee to be gracious unto all. You know, we know that the Most High, he, he shows mercy everywhere, man. You know, even with King Nebuchadnezzar. You know, with King, if you take King Nebuchadnezzar, for example, you know, he was uh, he was set up by the Heavenly Father. You know what I mean? Most High could have could have done what he wanted to do with him. You know, he was a he. Oh shit! Well, even the time uh, with Jonah in the boat when they was casting lot. Yeah, how about she my show mercy to all those heathen in that boat? Oh yeah, that's it. 
That's right. Huh? Most high, time and time again, he shows that you know he shows that mercy on all flesh. Nah, nah. Well, shit. Uh, even in uh, what's that? Uh, that scripture I used to bring out to you. I think it's in, to you brothers in Amos. Where you how about Shema was like like uh, uh, I have not forgotten what Moab did when they burnt the king of Edom uh, bones to lime. Oh, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like that's still that's still his creature, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Mm. We'll just be messing with, with my creation. Yeah, kind of. You know? I don't give a fuck how low on the toilet pole they are, man. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, cause here, here we go. So mosquitoes, they low on the toilet pole. Now we can just kill all mosquitoes off and make genetically modified ones. No, <laughs> I don't care how low it's to on the toilet bowl. It's still, it's still there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. It says, for when men will not believe that thou art, a, art of a full power, thou showest thy strength and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. And, that, and this uh, made me think of uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 we brought out earlier about how Yahabashima is not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power. Mm -hmm. And that power and that strength details from graciousness. Right. That comes from the grace that he has given unto us. You know? That's right. It says, But thou mastering thy power, judges with equity, and orderest us with great favor. For thou mayest use power when thou wilt. So that's, that's, that's how you master your power. Yeah, you how about Shema Shah is giving unto us? This is how you use it. By judging with equity and ordering with great favor. You know? This is how you use your power. You don't use your power by condemning somebody to death. That's right. That's right. It's not what you do. Oh, little Uzi and your whole family, y'all gonna die. That's not, that's not how you use your power, man. It says, but by such works as thou taught thy people that the just man should be merciful and has made thy children to be of good hope that thou give us repentance for sins. Yeah, the most high he gives repentance and sins, man. You know, and, and you have you have your, your powers under control, man. You know, this is part of this is part of uh of being a great judge, man. This is part of walking in love, having power that's under control. You know, you don't want to just mash on people. Uh, the most uh, high don't do that. It's hell all no. powerful and he doesn't yeah. just mash on people. Yeah. Who the hell are you? Right. Nobody likes a bully, man. Nobody likes a bully, man. But everybody loves an underdog. Everybody loves somebody that's that's meek and mild. You know, easily to be entreated. Yeah. Everybody loves that guy. God, this is uh this is Joel 2 and 13. It says, and rend your heart and not your garments. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, y'all about to see my size, the ultimate Jake, dog. It's God, brother. That's some Jake talk. Like, fix your mind, not your clothes, a hole. <laughs> It's like you try to clean up your room, just throw everything under the bed, God, huh? <laughs> put everything in the closet. God, huh? No, uh -oh. put this damn closet up, man. Clean it up for real. God, God it says, uh, Joel 2 and 13, and rend your heart, not your garments, and turn unto the Most High your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great and of great kindness and repented him of the evil. Read it one more time. Both of them, both of them. This is Joel 2 and 13. And rend your This is Joel 2 and 13. And rend your heart and not your garment. So rend your heart and not your garment. With your heart is your mind. Okay. So fix your mind and not your clothes. <laughs> and turn unto the most high. And turn unto the most high. So this is how you start fixing your mind by turning unto the most high. How do we turn to the most high? For he is gracious. So, so start accepting that you have grace. And merciful. And merciful. Start appreciating the mercy by giving the grace and the mercy back. 
slow to anger. Start being slow to anger. Calm your ass down. And a great kindness. And a great kindness. So start uh, deploying kindness back to your kindred. That's true. And repent of him of the evil. And repent of him of the evil. So you better be slow to anger. And you better repent yourself of some evil, man. Ooh. You know? That's right. That's, that's how you turn to the most high. It's telling you how right here. <laughs> It ain't all, all this stuff that these people make up. Where, where is this coming from, man? Right, right. It's telling you how to do it right here in the scriptures. Right. Ain't nobody making this up. Be gracious, be merciful, and slow to anger and kind. Huh. And it's another way how you know the most high. That's right. No. So a part of being righteous embodies compassion, mercy, Loving kindness and molding yourself in that manner, man. That's right. You know, that's that's how you be righteous, man. That's right. What well, is a part of it, big parts of it. Now, this is Psalms 86 in verse 15. But thou, O Yahweh, art a God full of compassion. Hold on, he's a God full of who? Compassion. So, <laughs> where the hell does it get he's a God full of death from? Where did that come from? Freestyle. <laughs> the heathen. <laughs> <laughs> Mark him as a heathen man. There was a devil that came and sold this while you were sleeping. Didn't you so good, see? <laughs> I did, but the devil did this one. God, so. yeah, God. I ain't know nothing about that. <laughs> God, bro. It says uh, Psalms 86 and 15. But thou, O Yahweh, art a full, art a power of full of compassion. Mm -hmm. And gracious and graciousness, long suffering and long suffering, and plenteous and mercy and, and truth, and plenteous and mercy and truth. Why? Because mercy and truth go together. By the way, I'm in the truth. You can't be in the truth without mercy. Yep. You're a liar. You're a liar. And you ain't got compassion. You're not compassionate. God, you see me in vow raiment, you want me dead. <laughs> you want to wrap my vow raiment, wet my vow raiment up. Yup. Yup. The man, oh, or, or the, the first thing Jake do wrong, let Jake make one mishap, huh? or one or two or three things wrong. He's dead for it. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead for it, huh? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, he fucked up. He's out of here. He's an evil man. Yep. That's not forbearing. <laughs> That's not forbearing. You mess up one time and now you want to. Yeah, yeah, get, get him out of here. He's out of the. He's out of this. He's out of that. Bro, he's yeah, how much my son do that to King David? The house of David. Right. King David messed up one time. He messed up more than one time. You know, yeah. and he did a sin unto death. Yeah, how about my son still was suffering with him, man? Yeah. You know. Uh, so compassion, being long suffering, being gracious, being merciful. These are all components of the Heavenly Father, man. You know? Anything else is something you're making up in your mind. You know? Cunning crackings. Exquisite subtility. <laughs> yeah, exquisite <laughs> subtility, God. God, this is Sirach 2 and 11. For the Most High is full of compassion. Hold on. No. <laughs> saying it again. It's Don DeMarco. <laughs> it's like, you need to know this. You need to know this. The Heavenly Father is full of compassion, man. That's right. Full of compassion and mercy. And mercy. Long suffering. Long suffering. And very pitiful. So why 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 do uh people down talk these type of qualities? You know why? Because they don't like the Heavenly Father. That's what it really boils down to, man. Mm. Or your ass ain't in the body. Yeah, kind of. That's really what it, what it really what it is. Yeah, you're anti Mashiach. Right. It says, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful. And forgive his sins and save him in time of affliction. Woo! So it says he's very pitiful, man. Like, he's very pitiful, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, people be like, oh, you pitiful? But well, the Heavenly Father is very pitiful, you know? He sees somebody in a pitiful state, that, that, make him, that moves him to compassion. So like, yeah, and, it, and it also says here in the latter part of the verse, it says, it says he saveth in time of affliction. He doesn't further the affliction. Yeah, ooh. You know? He's not furthering the affliction. We already been afflicted. You know, like the scripture says, it talks about how uh, your wound is incurable. Yeah. Nah, you know, I, why why be afflicted anymore? It's like a rough yeah. paraphrase. I was just gonna say too. Yeah, that's one. And in Isaiah 40, it says, speak comfortably, comfortably to uh Jerusalem because their iniquity is at an end. Just roughly paraphrasing. 
your iniquity has been accomplished. Go <laughs> daughter of Zion. Yeah, that's another. You yep. know what I'm saying? So it's like the the flip. Why do you want to further the affliction of an afflicted? That's, people? Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Man. It's because you're in the kingdom of death. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. You made a covenant with you. Covenant, and covenant with the kingdom of death. That's what fuels you. Mm -hmm. That's what fuels your spirit. Because you're in the spirit of death. That's right. Uh, proper grace and grace. This is Proverbs 11. Proverbs 19 and 11. The discretion of a man. Proverbs 19 and 11. The discretion of a man deferred his anger. The discretion of a man deferred his anger. Why? Because you have my shimmy side slow to anger. Why? Because he got discretion. That's what Joe asked me to have. What's discretion? Discretion goes into judgment, man. Soundness. Reasoning. You know? And it is the glory of and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. So it's the glory of a king to pass over a transgression. That's how the Heavenly Father is glorified, by passing over transgression, man. The Heavenly Father can easily wipe us out right now as, and, and completely be justified in it, man. You know? But he doesn't do it. Why? Because he's slow to anger, man. You know? That's what you're supposed to take into your mind and be like, oh, let me be slow to anger, man. You know? We can't forget that. You know, uh, in, in, in the, when they were breaking down charity, we can't forget when it says it beareth all things. When you go into beareth all things, it means to hide and cover a fault. Mm. You know, so that's how you walk in love by hiding and covering a fault. Yeah, that's it. And that's why. That's how you walk. That's how you put on like a mashiach, and that's how you walk in the spirit of our Lord. Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's it's the glory of a king to pass over a transgression. That's how we glorify because we passed over transgressions, man. And that's how the Heavenly Father is what makes him so great. Because he's going to deliver us although we don't deserve it, man. That's, glory, that's a glorious thing, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion. So the king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion. Now, let anyone on this block here a lion roar, they're going to be ready to take off. You know? So this is what, <laughs> this what the wrath of a king can bring. You know? But what? But his favor is as dew upon grass. But his favor is as the dew upon grass, though. You know? And the dew upon grass, that's that's plenteous, man. You know? You can't count how much dew is in the grass, man. You just gonna come outside and see it's wet. That's 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 his semblance to the Heavenly Father's grace and favor that he bestows upon uh those who love him and even though those who don't. This is an undefeatable breakdown, man. Yeah. You know, let's happily you find yourself fighting against the Lord, and we all know what they say in the world: you can't box with God. Yeah. Undefeatable. Yep. You know, victories is the most high. <laughs> Be the real money, Mayweather. <laughs> right. I get money and I'm I weather to make a billion and over. God, <laughs> <laughs> real money team. For real against what? Uh -oh. I like to see somebody try to like. Nah, I ain't gonna say that. Luke six and thirty-five. Luke six and thirty-five. God, it's undefeated. Oh, I see somebody trying to come up with some spirit against the spirit. Got several more. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want, I, I, I want to see somebody defeat this scripture right here. <laughs> this one right alone. This, this one scripture alone. Oh, the water. Huh? Go. The water. This, this one scripture alone right here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the water, bro. Satan. God. But this, this one scripture right here alone. <laughs> right here alone by itself. It's, it could, could, could uh, break, cut a lot of shit, and it's and, and it's our Lord speaking too. The same Lord that people claim to serve. What did he say? Luke six and verse. Luke six and thirty-five. But love ye your enemies. But 
But love ye your enemies. Nobody want to bring this scripture up. Nobody wants to bring this scripture up. You know what people say? You, you know why people don't want to bring this scripture up? Because they don't think it don't matter. They don't think it's matter. They don't think that loving your enemies matters. Like this is something that's this is something that's uh one of the lesser things you should be worried about in the scriptures, man. You know? If it's one of the lesser things we should be worried about in the scriptures, why is this something that your house spoke on? That's right, that's right, huh? It says, but love ye your enemies. But love ye your enemies. Who are your enemies? Who are your enemies? <laughs> those that are those that are enemies to righteousness. Those can be enemies. Those that are enemies to righteousness. You know what I mean? That can be your enemy. Those that are enemies to the to the uh, to the cross. Uh, uh. You know what I mean? But they're enemies in the sense of being a foe. Uh. And then you know Jack ain't gonna say, oh, the enemies the heathen. We know they enemies, but you don't wanna love them. So how you gonna spin that around? How you how you gonna spin this? <laughs> so loving your enemies gotta be the enemies of your own kindred that are righteous. I mean, uh, that are enemies to righteousness. So like the, the, scriptures, scriptures, like this, like the scripture says your enemy will be those of your own household. It's not talking about your household as in the sense of who's living under your roof. Your household is your family. Your enemies will be your family. God, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but love your enemies, those of your family that are enemies of righteousness. God, huh? You know? Those that those that want to be an adversary when you're they wanna they wanna, you know, when you do right and then they wanna they wanna uh uh they don't wanna requite a good term. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, you you do you do good unto to them. They were they repay uh goodness with uh evil. With evil. Mm -hmm. You know, uh -huh. you're repaying my goodness with evil. Uh -huh. But what you the know? scriptures tell you, this 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 is what proves your faith because the scriptures tell you he that uh repay of uh, uh righteousness or good with evil, evil shall never depart from, from his, his house. house. From his and that's talking about your house. Oh. <laughs> your house is your family. Yeah, yeah, God, like, that's cold. That's fucking cold, huh? So what the hell are you worried about it for? <laughs> Just love them. That's right. Huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's out of here. Yeah, God. We're not depart from his house. Nah, nah. Can't yeah, make it up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's like the brother said. Nah, nah. <laughs> um, let's see. But love ye your enemies. Uh -huh. Back in Luke six and thirty five. Uh -huh. But love ye your enemies yep. and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. So and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. You know. So you're supposed to do good. Which what's the part of doing good? People don't even know what doing good is, man. You know. Being good is being benevolent, man. Being charitable, showing benignity, you know? Right. These, these are good things, man. Following peace, love, being faithful, restraining yourself, being meek, you know? That's, that's, that's doing good. And that's also a form of lending because you're giving of yourself. And give that of yourself, hoping back not to receive nothing again. You know? You give of yourself, God, right? Yeah, God. that's right. I and your reward shall be great, and you shall be children of the highest. So this this is how you are a child of the highest. That's right, that's this right. is how you are the child of the highest by loving your enemies, doing good, and lending, and hoping for nothing again. And that goes into being merciful. That goes into being merciful. Oh, merciful. Oh, it goes into being merciful because uh, the Most High, He's merciful to the kind and to the uh and to the evil. Nope, it's always going more too. <laughs> <laughs> it says the highest. It's like, I just be having it in my mouth. Like, oh, oh, these scripts, I am the script. <laughs> when I am a boof. <laughs> it says, and your, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful. And you doing, brother? You doing, brother? Right, right, right. You're an Israelite, brother. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So, this is how you be a child of the highest by being kind unto the unthankful and unto the evil, man. See, see this, but this, this literally, you know why Yahweh Shah said this? Because this is a cheat code. Yahweh Shah was giving you a cheat code on how to slip on through there, man. You know how to be on another level than other people. He was, he was showing you how to separate yourself, man. You know, it goes more into it. Huh? Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. So that's why you do it. Because you're trying to be like the Heavenly Father. Let's go, asshole. Yeah. No, 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 no. You got it. So this, this, this is why you're being kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Why? Because you're trying to be like the Heavenly Father, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't that what we're supposed to be striving to be like? Mm -hmm. No, I want to strive to be like a man. You know? And I want to strive to be like the Heavenly Father, man. 
So you better strive to be like, man. Mm. Sure, you're striving for the mastery. You're striving to be like oh, the yeah, master. Oh, yeah, Khan, yeah, Khan. I'm striving Khan. for the master. Khan, bro. Because he's a master. Khan, if you dial mastering thy power, mm. oh, he's yeah. the ultimate master. Yeah. He's yeah. the mastermind. Oh, yeah. So you're striving for the mastery. You're striving to be like the master. Oh, service be obedient to your master. Who the hell is your master? <laughs> Thirty-seven. It says, "Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven." Right, and th and this is why you are to be kind unto the unthankful and the evil. Why? Because uh, the heavenly Father is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil, and eventually they can turn to being thankful and righteous and good. That's the whole point, man. You condemning them to death because they evil at the point when you met them, but they can repent from that. Yeah. That's another look at entertaining angels unaware. It's because they're in vile raiment and they and they, they don't look and appear to be sons of God as it stands, but you're entertaining them anyway. That's why I say judge not by the outward appearance. It's another thing your house I told you to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. You entertain angels. Done, huh? You know? He's in vile raiment. He's morally corrupt right now. He's an angel though. Nah, nah. Nah, nah. Or even if he's not, you better fucking entertain him like he is. That's right. Because your house shot at the end of the day, your house shot is all and in all, man. How do you break that down, man? Yeah, the reason right. that your house shot that's written in the scripture, so you can look at people as if they were your house shot, so you can be moving in the right spirit, man. Yep. It don't matter about all the other logistics of it. Oh man, what if he's not your house shot? Or he's not your house shot? Just treat him like he is. Though. You can be in the right spirit. You can be storing up treasures in heaven. God, you know what I'm saying? Store up some treasures in heaven. What? When you how about somebody's not gonna get mad at you because you treat them like, uh, like you would treat your Lord? That's stupid, man. Oh, bro, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no law against righteousness. There's no law against mercy. There's no law against gentleness. It don't mean worship them, but still be. You can be gentle, like you said. You can be gentle. You can be merciful. You can be loving. You can be charitable. God. That's why I say it's on that cane right now, man. <laughs> well, all you want to do is keep talking, man. No, this is y'all about to second take your lips away. You already ain't on your legs. You already on your third leg. And you still want to talk shit, man. Right. We had uh, uh, Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. This Proverbs. Chapter, oh, you got it. It's like Proverbs 16. I was in my book. Proverbs 16 and verse 6. Uh -huh. By mercy and truth, Woo! iniquity is purged. Uh -huh. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. All right? Not by being in the truth. <laughs> your iniquity is purged. Well, like we brought out earlier, you're not in the truth. You don't have mercy. Mercy and truth go hand in hand. You want me to prove that? <laughs> Proverbs 20 and 28. Now, this is Proverbs 20 and verse 28. Now, this is Proverbs 20 and 28. Mercy and truth preserve the king. There you go. Uh huh. And his throne is upholding by mercy. Okay, so if mercy and truth preserve the king, well, mercy has to be with truth for your ass to be preserved as a part of the remedy. That's right. That's right. What's that? It says, mercy and truth preserve the king. Uh huh. And his throne is upholding by mercy. So that's what upholds you. That's what upholds your throne. It's mercy. And you're not in the truth without mercy. Now, this is Matthew 9 and 12. Matthew 9 and 12. This is Matthew 9 and verse 12. It reads, But when Yahweh Shai heard that he said unto them, They 
that be whole need not a physician, mm -hmm. but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. <laughs> I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh -huh. and what, and what, what's the, what, what was he quoting? I believe that was Hosea the sixth chapter. You know, if I'm not mistaken, he was quoting Hosea the sixth chapter when he said, "Go learn what that mean." If I would rather mercy than sacrifice, man. And what did what what did he mean by that? What what did the Lord mean by that? The weightier your matters of the law. <laughs> mercy and truth preserve a king. That's right. By mercy and truth is iniquity purged. You know, the heavenly Father would rather mercy than sacrifice, man. They don't want a whole bunch of sacrifices, man. Show some damn mercy. So they 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 that be whole, they don't need a physician, man. They don't need a physician. If you already in good standing, you already know pretty much what your end gonna be. What the hell you need a physician for? You straight. You know? That's just like if you ain't handicapped and you parking in the handicapped spot, man. Say in the handicapped spot for somebody who really handicapped in, man. You know? The hell you need the Lord for? And you don't need to be thinking you all good though. No, no, you don't. You need to think you got a position you, at all times. You need the you need the That's Lord. Really what he was trying to convey. Exactly, to. exactly. Exactly. Without me, how the fuck you gonna make it? You bet you better be something better be wrong with you. <laughs> you better fake a limp. <laughs> you better hold your side. <laughs> oh shit. Like you just think you're gonna just sacrifice yourself. I'm good. No nah, motherfucker, you better hope for some mercy. You better hope for some mercy. I'm hurt. Help me. Better grab a game. <laughs> I'm lame. I'm lame. Good, huh? <laughs> Proverbs 21 to Let's look it well. So you just gonna go, I'm sacrificing. I'm whole. Like I'm good. Old. Nothing hurts. <laughs> this is uh, Proverbs 21 and 3. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. There you go right there. So the Heavenly Father ain't looking for a whole bunch of sacrifices, man. You're gonna go out here, do a whole bunch of camps, you're gonna make a whole bunch of videos. A lot of people gonna watch them. They're gonna say cool and shallow warm. You know, you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice uh your Saturday to go teach or something. So, you know, you're gonna sat sacrifice some times with your kids and your wife to study some scripts, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and so yeah, how about see my and you're gonna be like, oh I'm sa I sacrifice, Lord. No, to do justice and judgment is a sac yes. uh, it's more acceptable than sacrifice, man. That's right, bro. The Heavenly Father looking for justice and judgment, man. You know? That's why your ass better judge a right. And how do you judge a right? You need to be slow to anger. You need compassion. You need to be gentle. You need to be tender. You need to be meek. You need to suffer yourself to be the front. That's a part of judging the right. Man. You know? That's right. A lot of times taking yourself out of the equation and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. That's really how you judge. Come on. It's like you obey the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord.
is 1 Timothy 9. This is 1 Timothy 1 and 9. <clears throat> Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, mm -hmm. but for the lawless mm -hmm. and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for the murders of fathers and, mur and mothers and, ma and manslayers. So this, <laughs> God. So this ultimately what the law was made for, and this is what Yahweh Shah was made for. Like uh, the brother uh, Hazan used to always bring up that Romans five, how Yahweh Shah died for the ungodly, man. You know. So this is what the law is for, and this is what our Lord, the Messiah, Yahweh Shah is for, man. All right. He's for, uh, uh, he's for unrighteous, the ungodly, the profane, the unholy. Why? So they can be made back whole again. They can be made back right again, man. So to keep that in mind, we got to think the same people that you don't want to show love and mercy to or the same people that you don't want to endure or bear or be long suffering with. A lot of these people are whom the Lord, Yahweh Shai came for. <laughs> right. So how the hell are you going to be a servant of the Lord? And, and this is another point to this, uh, to this first Timothy uh, 1 and 9. It says, uh, the law was made for the for not for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient for the ungodly, the sinners, and the profane, you know how they, they have high holy days and things of that nature. Uh -huh. You know, we're we're actually uh, supposed to be children of the day, so it's not really supposed to be any separation of specific days anyway. You're, you're supposed to oh, have, yeah. be, be just walking in that spirit continuously yeah. anyway. Well, that's that, that's the spirit you said, because it talks about that in Romans the 14th chapter, about uh, one man esteem of one day, another right. higher than another. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We, we're, we're supposed to be children of the day. Yeah. Like, uh, I, you know, our, 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 we're supposed to be walking in light continuously every day. So, so what you going to do? You're going to keep this day and then the next day do wickedness? You're supposed to be honoring the Father all the time. You know? You, that's, and this is this, it's really jumping out at me now that it's saying that lawlessness and being ungodly and sinners. Really, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, I'm laying it out for you because I got to tell you every day. Instead of it just being a natural, innate thing to just be that manner of person all the time. That's him as hell. You know what that's I mean? Him as hell. And that's what that's that's what that's what's jumping out. And that's what I got a lesson. So look a little bit. Yeah, kind no, that's, that's that's a hell of a point. That's a hell of a point. That's really what it, what it, it, it wasn't made for you because you're supposed to already be in that spirit. <laughs> Merciful all the time, nah, nah. you know, doing the right thing by the Heavenly Father all the time. So if you got to constantly, constantly check, constantly check boxes like this, that means your ass is not repenting yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, know, you haven't repented yet. You need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. It should be second nature. That's God. what it was with Yahweh Shai. Yeah. That's, why they, that's why the whole goal is to put it in our inward parts. Yeah. It's because it ain't got to be no separation. Like you, it's, once it's in you, it's just innate. God. It's natural. You don't have to do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. If you, if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You know what I'm saying? One life period. That's why your ass need to be focused on what, how the hell your ass need to be operating. So you can be moving in the right spirit so you don't have to be subject to the laws and ordinances of the law because why are you going to be walking? You are, you're going to become the help. Wait, 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 Sitting on this one. Luke, 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 Luke 9. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought I brought this out before to somebody. <laughs> and they tried to bring out uh uh what, what was it? Uh what was it uh Elias? Or what was Elias the counterpart? Oh, yeah, yeah, Elijah. 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 Yeah, Elisha. Elijah. 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 Uh, Elijah counterpart, Alyssa. They brought out Alyssa after I brought out this right here in Luke. <laughs> How the hell is that? Luke 9 51. How the hell can you bring that out after this? Now, this is Luke, not. This is Luke 9 and 51. It reads. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Talk about Yahweh Shah. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Uh -huh. And they did not receive him because his face was, though 
he would go to Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, without that, we command fire <laughs> to come down <laughs> from heaven and consume them even as Elias did. Even as Elias did. Okay. So that, now we're going to find out that something is, this is contrary to what Alyssa and Eli, uh, 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 Elijah did. Because they were coming into a spirit. They were They went in the same spirit. Yeah. They went in the same spirit as Yahweh wanted them to be operating in. That's right. And that's why Yahweh is going to rebuke them because they thought that was the right way to go. And it says, but he turned and rebuked them. But he turned and rebuked them. Why the hell did he rebuke them if this was right? If this was a cool, if, this, if nothing was wrong with, uh, with, with what they were saying, because they brought up a count of what righteous men did. Yep. So, if, but if nothing was wrong with it, and righteous men did it, and it was okay, why did you have a rebuke them for it? We need to know this. These yeah. are questions that you got to answer. You know not what manner of spirit you are of. Yeah, he rebuked them and said, you know what not manner of spirit you are of, man. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm pushing a whole nother spirit. You got to come into my spirit, man, That's right. to make it. You got to be walking in this spirit to get delivered, man. That's not conducive with my spirit. That's not conducive with you receiving salvation. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy man's lives, but to save them. And that's what, we, that's what we're here for. We're here to save other man's lives in our own. You save your own life by saving other people's life, man. You know, you don't save your life by destroying somebody else's life. A good, that's a good chance your life gonna be destroyed, man. Cause how you treat somebody else is how the heavenly father gonna treat your ass, man. Good. You wanna destroy somebody, the heavenly father gonna wanna destroy your ass. Who the hell are you? I was thirsty, you didn't feed me. I was hungry, you weren't merciful. Yep. You weren't merciful. I was in prison, you you came to visit me. It's all going into not being a merciful man. Yep. You didn't walk in mercy. Yep. You seen it and didn't do nothing. Yep. We pray that this was edifying. We want to give all praises to Yahweh, Peace to the nation of Israel. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Shalom.